In section 5.9, you will write polynomial functions and models. In this first example, we're going to write a cubic function whose graph passes through these four points. In standard form, that cubic function is going to look like this. f of x is equal to a sub n times x minus k sub 1 times x minus k sub 2 times x minus k sub 3. Now those k values are just x-intercepts or zeros for this cubic function, and they give us those three x-intercepts. They also give us an x and a y value. So we substitute in these values and solve for a sub n so that we can write our, our function. So in for f of x or y, we're going to put 6. We're going to solve for a sub n. In for x, we're going to put 0. Our first x-intercept is negative 2, so that's going to be double negatives. I'll write that as plus 2. 0 in for x. Second x-intercept is negative 1. That's double negatives. And third one, and I'm putting 0 in for x. Third x-intercept is 1. Okay, simplifying on the right, I get uh, a sub n times 2 times 1 times negative 1, or 6 equals a sub n times negative 2. And now dividing both sides by negative 2, I find that a sub n is equal to negative 3. So now I can write this function, this cubic function, f of x is equal to negative 3 times x minus that negative 2, so I'll write it as plus 2 again, x minus negative 1, so I'll write that as plus 1, and x minus 1. There's our cubic function. In the second example, we want to show that the third order differences for this cubic function are non-zero and constant. So we'll make a table for this function. We'll put x values on top and f of x values on the bottom. We'll let our x values be consecutive integers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 should be enough. So finding f of 1 for our table, I'll put 1 in for x in the function. 1 cubed is 1, 1 squared is 1, times negative 4 is negative 4, minus 1, plus 1. So I'm getting a function value of negative 3. I'll put that in my table. And now I need to find f of 2. 2 cubed is 8, 2 squared is 4, and 4 times negative 4 is negative 16, minus 2, plus 1. So I'm getting negative 10 plus 1, or negative 9. My third function value, f of 3, is 3 cubed, that's 27. 3 squared is 9, and 9 times negative 4 is negative 36, minus 3, plus 1. So it looks like negative 9, negative 12 plus 1, negative 11. Fourth function value, 4 cubed is 64. And 4 squared is 16 times negative 4, that's negative 64, minus 4, plus 1. So I'm getting negative 3 again. And fifth function value, f of 5. 5 cubed is 125. 5 squared is 25 times negative 4 is negative 100. Minus 5 plus 1. So <clears throat> 20 plus 1, that's 21. And f of 6. 6 cubed, and I'll use my calculator is 216, and 6 squared is 36 times negative 4 is negative 144, minus 6, plus 1. So 216 take away 144 is 72, take away 6 is 66 plus 1, this is a total of 67. Okay, now we're ready to look at first order differences. So we'll subtract, we'll subtract 67, take away 21, and that's 46. 21, take away negative 3, that's 21 plus 3, or 24. 
Negative 3, take away negative 11. Negative 3 plus 11 is 8. Negative 11, take away negative 9. That's negative 11 plus 9, or negative 2. And negative 9, take away negative 3. That's negative 9 plus 3, or negative 6. So first order differences are not non-zero and constant. So if they were, that would indicate a linear model of the form y equals mx plus b. So now we'll check out our second differences, which should not be non-zero and constant either. 46 take away 24 is 22. 24 take away 8 is 16. 8 take away negative 2, that's 8 plus 2, or 10. Negative 2 take away negative 6, that's negative 2 plus 6, or 4. Okay, second uh, order differences were not non-zero and constant. If they were, that would have indicated a quadratic function, a quadratic function or model of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, and third order differences. Now, these should be non-zero and constant. 22 take away 16 is 6. 16 take away 10 is 6. And 10 take away 4 is also 6. So they are. We've shown that the third order differences are non-zero and constant, a constant of 6 for this cubic function. And the cubic model would be of the form y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Okay, in our last example, the first five centered square numbers are given, 1, 5, 13, 25, and 41. We want to use finite differences to find a polynomial function that fits this pattern. So we'll make our table, and we'll put in our x values. When x is 1, our first centered square number is 1. When x is 2, our centered square number is 5. Our third number is 13. Fourth number is 25. And the fifth number, fifth centered square number is 41. Okay, so checking those first order differences to see if they're non-zero and constant so that we could write a linear model, we'll subtract 41 take away 25 is 16. 25 take away 13 is 12, 13 take away 5 is 8, and 5 take away 1 is 4. So the first order differences are not non-zero and constant, so now we look at second order differences. We'll subtract 16 take away 12 is 4, 12 take away 8 is 4, and 8 take away 4 is also 4. So we have a quadratic model indicated because second order differences were non-zero and constant. And that quadratic model will look like this. f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, so we're looking for a, b, and c so that we can write this equation in x and y. So we need to write a system of three equations, three unknowns. And to do that, I'll use those first three ordered pairs. The smallest values is what I'm going to choose to use, 1, 1, 2, 5, and 313. So to write our first equation, we'll substitute uh, 1 in for y and 1 in for x. In our second equation, 5 goes in for y and 2 in for x. And third equation, 13 in for y and 3 in for x. So I'll just clean up that system. First equation is a plus b plus c equals 1. Second equation is 4a plus 2b plus c equals 5. Third equation is 9a plus 3b plus c equals 13. Remember, we can use substitution or elimination to solve this system. I'm going to choose to use substitution 
So I'm going to solve for c first in that first equation. It's equal to 1 minus a minus b, and I'm going to substitute into the other two equations for c. So I have 4a plus 2b plus c, which is now 1 minus a minus b, and that all equals 5. Into the third equation for c, I have 9a plus 3b plus c, which will be 1 minus a minus b, and that's equal to 13. So now I need to clean up this system of two equations, two unknowns. 4a minus 1a is 3a. 2b minus 1b is 1b. And I'll subtract 1 from both sides, leaving 4 on the right. Okay, 9a take away 1a is 8a. And 3b take away 1b is 2b. And 1, I'll subtract 1 from both sides, so I get 12 on the right. Okay, now looking at this system of two equations, two unknowns, again I can use substitution or elimination. And I'm going to choose to use elimination and multiply every term in that second equation by negative one half. So I'll leave that first equation alone. 3a plus b is equal to 4. And I'll distribute uh, negative one half times 8a is negative 4a. Negative one half times 2b is negative b and negative one-half times 12 is negative 6. So now I'm ready to add these two equations together to eliminate my b term. 3a and negative 4a is negative 1a, and 4 and negative 6 is negative 2. So when I divide both sides by negative 1, I find out a is equal to 2. And now I can go back to either of the uh, two equations in that last system. I'll, I'll choose the first one and solve for b. So in for a, I'm going to put 2. I'm going to solve for b, so I'll multiply 3 times 2 and get 6, and subtract 6 from both sides to get b alone, so I get b is equal to negative 2. And now I'll go back to where I solved for c. c was equal to 1 minus a, which is now 2, minus b, which is negative 2. That's double negative, so I'll make that a positive. So I find c is equal to 1. Now I can write my function, my cube, uh, quadratic function for this um, data, these centered square numbers. f of x is equal to a, which is 2, x squared, plus b, which is negative 2, x, plus c, which is 1. So there is our quadratic function. Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 2, 3, and 4 found on pages 394 and 395 of your textbook.